Hey, what's up, guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about Cinema 4D 2024 20, particles with fluid simulation behavior. All right. <laughs> I mean, like this is a big word. It's not exactly fluids, but you can see these tendrils, how it will split up with some cohesion and repulsion in the particles. So it definitely behaves more realistic than your standard particle system. If you just set it up correctly, and this is what I will show you today, just be sure that as always more of the good stuff, I think like over 100 exclusive tutorials and assets are on my Patreon. So you can also join it for free. But other than that, I would say it is time to start. Maybe one little excuse. The first five minutes or so are a little bit dry. I have to say that, okay? But I think if you want to learn something, then just fight yourself through it, all right? So see you in Cinema 4D. I want to give these particles something like a fluid movement or something that is a bit more natural, a bit more realistic, okay? So, I mean, this one is super boring. And of course, you can just put a turbulence into it and maybe we want to emit from a cube and make it a little bit wider or something like that and put this one to a thousand let's just see what will happen here okay <laughs> all right so this is super boring let me maybe go into the properties and deactivate the speed and i think also these particles they can just be a little bit bigger so let me go to the radius and i also want to give it some variation and just to see the radius of your particles you also need to go to draw and activate the draw all right and now you will have a dot for the particle but also the particle will show you the radius of your particle okay so now we emit these particles here and we can give it some turbulence movement all right so maybe we want to increase this one and you get something like this maybe i want to increase the scale okay to get a bigger noise movement here something like this maybe we want to reduce the strength to just not let it go too wild here okay so already you will get your classic turbulence movement okay this is beautiful what you also want to do is maybe give it some gravity all right so now you can let them fall down just do it like this and you also get a little bit of a pattern a bit of a mix between the gravity and the turbulence and yeah this is like a nice start but i just want to make this even more interesting so maybe for now i want to let them collide with a plane Let's just put a plane beneath it and this will just help me to show you the movement. Okay, what I'm talking about. So maybe we want to let these particles collide with this plane. Therefore, of course, you just have to go here and put a collider tag on it. Front seems to be good and the bounce and the friction, I think that this is probably too high or you know what, I want to get rid of the friction completely. But now you can see that the particles will still not collide with your plane. Therefore, you need to go to simulation modifier and you need a collide modifier. And by the way, it is a good habit to put these effectors or modifiers into your particle group. Okay, this is where the particles live in. The emitter will create them into the group. Okay, so every emitter has a group. All right, it's pretty simple. And actually, it's a good habit. If you want to let these ones only work together with your emitter, then you put it into the group. Okay, so you can do it like this. And now I think with this one with collide active, hopefully these particles will collide with the floor. All right, and you can see that they are quite bouncy. Okay, not sure if I want to do that. So I think I want to get rid of the bounce. All right, now they slide down here and this is actually what I want to do here. Something that I also want to do is to put a material on this plane to just make it a little bit darker. And I want to just put this one to maybe a dark tint like this one. All right, so I can just see my particles better and we can also put the camera into the scene. I will just go to the coordinates and put it to a null position. Now you can move it backwards, for example, and let me just see it through the camera. Actually, I want to have this view as the render view. All right, let me redo this and yes you can now see the distortion of this plane and everything but i think i just want to set this one to a uh, autographical camera all right so it will make everything flat and i want to just put it into my scene like this one now i just make this plane longer and let me just see this so now we just have a good view on what the turbulence is doing and let me just change this one to a strength of 
50. Let's just see. And yes, now you get a lot of turbulence here. This is definitely too much. So I will reduce this one. So let me just also move the emitter up here. So we already have some beautiful scene. So this is nice and flat, like a graphic design here. Okay, I like that. We can also make the emitter longer and just place it up here, maybe a little bit higher. So particles are starting here. And let me check this one last time, what is happening. All right, particles are falling down and they are sliding down here and you can definitely see the turbulence but i want to give these particles another behavior okay and therefore i just want to go to simulation and i want to go to modifiers and i want to put a flock modifier into it and let me just put it into the hierarchy like this one. Okay, so hierarchy is actually important. And I think it makes sense that gravity comes first, then the flock and then the collide. That seems to just make logically sense. And now you can see these particles slide down here. They are still sliding down here and we definitely need more particles to see this one. Let's put it to 10,000 and I think we can also make them just a little bit bigger to see them better. So I want to put this one to three and one. Let me just double check this one. Okay, so these are our particles and you know what, when I'm already doing this one, I'm sick of the screen actually. So let me go to simulation modifiers and I want to use a color mapper. I think we can put this one to to this position and I want to set this one I guess to velocity speed let's just see what is happening here okay not so much so let's define the upper value here let's put this one to 500 and uh, maybe it's even faster let's put it to 800 okay so yeah okay so it seems like here they are really slow so yeah, let me see if I can clamp this one. Um, should I move this one over here? No, of course not. Let's see how this is happening when I put this one higher. Okay, now you get something like a little bit of a gradient here. And maybe I want to inverse this one and I want to put this one to a white. So it feels a little bit more like water, okay? <laughs> Water is not really blue, but yeah, I think this is cool. So now let's finally focus on the flock. And right now it is not doing so much, but with the flock, you can give it something like a tendril viscosity behavior. Okay. And therefore, I want to more or less just focus on the cohesion. And let's just see what happens when I put a higher cohesion strength into it. That means the particles try to just clump up. Okay, so you can already see a little bit of clumping. I hope that this is actually an English word. I just want to say that they try to move towards each other and build little bubbles or something like that. I can already see a little bit of this effect, but when I increase the radius, then in a bigger area, they try to build these little clumps or bubbles, however you want to call it. And you can already see a little bit of this tendril effect where they try to move towards each other. So I think I want to put this one even to 20 and be sure that your simulation speed will definitely get slower when you increase the radius because there will be more calculations. And yeah, already you can see now we get this tendril movement here, which is quite interesting. Of course, it's nothing realistic, but it reminds me of water and it's just a beautiful movement, okay? So you can do stuff like this one. Let's just see what happens when I increase the strength further. Then I guess that these ones, they get more pronounced, okay? And and yeah, let's put this one to 40. And I think then probably we'll get a bigger pattern here. So you can see now they will form like bigger tendrils or less tendrils, but they are bigger. Okay, something like this one. And it seems like for this kind of movement, it is just the most important to work with the cohesion and the radius here. So I think I want to make this a little bit smaller to just get more of these tendrils. But of course, when you go to 60, then they will clump up into, yeah, just a bigger pattern here. So I think this is pretty easy to understand when you see it flat like this, this will help. And maybe now I want to see also what the separation is doing. And I think like this is the repulsion force. Okay, so this one, when you increase it, then the particles, they will try to move away from each other. And it's like the opposite force to this one. And together they create like this flocking behavior that you maybe know from nature, from a flock of birds or something like that. Okay. And 
I think in this scenario, the separation will just, yeah, make it more diffuse. So now they try to move away from each other. Let's put this one to 10. All right, and you can see that now it gets a little bit more diffuse here and less accentuated, okay? Because they try to move away from each other in this radius. When I increase the radius, then they try to get away in an even bigger radius. And you can see it will actually get more noisy because one force is trying to push them together, but the separation is building these little flocks here. Okay, so yeah, I wouldn't say that this one is beautiful. Let me just out of curiosity, put this one to 10. And yes, now you can see that the flocking, the separation is even more pronounced. And therefore this one is quite noisy and I think it's not so beautiful. Okay, but sometimes you definitely need this opposite force to uh, counteract your cohesion. All right. And let me just see how it was with the original radius and the strength. All right. So now we only have a little bit of separation, but let me just see what happens when I put this one to 50. And again, they will just fly away from each other and it gets pretty noisy. So for now, I want to keep the separation like this and the cohesion is fine. All right. And yeah, just to show you, Without the flock, this one is just pretty linear and boring, okay? So there is not an interesting force which is changing it. So yeah, the flock is great. And of course, you could also combine this one with the turbulence to get an even more interesting movement. So let me just see. Now we just mix in some turbulence and let me maybe for a second just see the turbulence. Okay, so you can see like this noise pattern here. All right, this is great. And I think now when we put this one together with the flocking, then yeah, you get the turbulence movement, you get the turbulence movement and the flocking. And I think that this is quite nice. I just think that this one are a little bit of crazy numbers. So maybe I want to put this one down to 30. All right, so it will not be that calculative intensive, I think. All right, and of course, what we are doing here with this linear piece here, we can also do it with, um, yeah, with 3D movements. So maybe I just want to build something like a waterfall sculpture. All right, let's just try to do that. And therefore, I think I just want to set this one to a circle and put this one to 100 by 100. Let me just see how many particles are getting out of it. All right, so this is looking good for our water sink. Okay, so this one is emitting water into the scene. Uh, let's just call it water. Of course, it's not really actually acting perfectly like water, but it reminds me of water. Anyway, give me probably a cylinder and give me a height of one. Now I just want to place this beneath our water emitter here and I maybe want to rotate it just like this, for example, and I want to give it a bigger radius and also some rotation value and also some rotation segments. Now, of course, this one also needs to have a collider on it. Put this one to front and I think we can just make it a little bit bigger for now. Let's do it like this. And now I just want to see what is happening in my scene. All right. So this one is already quite interesting. You can see how it is colliding. I just think we should move it a little bit down here and maybe I want to make this one bigger and rotate it just a little bit differently, something like this one. Now I just want to see how this one is reacting. Okay, I think I like it. But something that I want to change is in the collider, I want to work with these numbers, okay? So we don't need any bounds, but I think we should at least add a little bit of friction to make it more realistic. And I also want to change the angle variation maybe to 50. So it's not going that linear into one direction, but it will be forced outwards a bit and there will just be more variation. And now when you see this one, then hopefully, yes, you get a totally different behavior from your collider. Maybe this is a little bit too crazy. So I just want to set this one to 10 and 20. Let me see this once again. All right, and I think that this one is looking quite cool. And already you can see this water-like behavior here. You get these beautiful tendrils. I just think in the flock, we maybe can even put this one to 15. Let me just see this once again. All right, maybe I put this one to 40 to make it a bit more accentuated. Okay, so you get less tendrils, but they will just be more focused into two parts here and not like, like do it with 20. Then you can see it will be just more spread out. And 
will be a little bit more loose. Okay, actually, I also like this one. So I will just go for 30. And I'm just <laughs> curious, what is the strength actually changing here? Let me put this one to two. All right, maybe, maybe this is like an overall multiplier for the settings because now this is pretty strong all right it's almost like something like honey or something really dense all right so I mean this is super interesting so maybe when we work with a higher strength then of course we can reduce this stuff and it actually looks like that this one is like a global multiplier but don't take this for granted this is just my feeling for now and maybe i want to set this one to six all right, and maybe I set the radius to 25. Just want to see this once again. All right, and yes, overall, I think that this one is super interesting. Of course, this whole stuff will get more detailed when you go into your emitter and change the particle radius. All right, to just emit more particles, more smaller particles, then you get more resolution, of course. But now you can make this one more interesting and you could just put another disc over there and I would just follow the flow of this one. So I just want to move this one over here, rotate it a little bit like this and let me just see this once again. And now you can just create something really interesting here. So you can see that this one is hitting it here. All right, and of course it's moving a little bit around, but now for example, you could create another disc, move this one over here and just let me see this one in 3D view. All right, so this one should be more to the front. And of course you can vary these sizes, put this one to 300 for example, and create something like this one. And maybe you want to create another one which is a bit smaller and this one could be angled like this. And hopefully some of the water will hit this one let me just see this one last time here what is happening in the scene all right okay so this is getting interesting and i'm just playing around here but you can see that this is more or less what i want to do here okay so i'm rendering this one out overnight but i just wanted to give you a little idea about the flocking modifier and how you can just use different effectors and modifiers with your emitters to get different kinds of behaviors so yeah i hope this was not too random knowledge for you and it was interesting so thank you so much for your time and see you in the next tutorial bye everyone